Welcome to the latest edition of Roanoke County Business Partners. On today's show, we're going to have three segments. The first one, Melinda Cox will be at the Entrepreneur Express workshop uh, downtown, uh, filmed at the Jefferson Center. Our second segment, I'll be discussing the Roanoke Valley Asian American Business Owners Association. And lastly, Jill Loop will be at Plastics One to profile one of the county's uh, high-tech and fast-growing businesses. Stay tuned. Um, so I thought it was a very nice opportunity to bring all of that together and try to educate individuals on what goes into the opening of the restaurant. Just because I make a good spaghetti sauce doesn't mean I need to open a restaurant. That's the best point you could say. And I know when you got this together and decided to do this, you called in the reinforcements. That's what I called Sandy Rattler, the executive director of the business assistance. And I knew she would come to our rescue and we could together, we could um, partner with individuals and make this happen and make it successful. And Sandy, you have a track record right, of working with time. Entrepreneur Express sure in the run of the region and all, but we've yeah, never done this program before. before. Are you surprised about the turnout that we're having? I'm like pleasantly surprised. Yeah, yeah, I never do. I don't think we're going to start planning to work hoping for 30 to 40, but not over 100 of those. Obviously, we've hit a niche market, and that's what we love to do. We're always, when we're doing something like this, Tristan, that run up's always a great place because we have great they might start saying, but we also well, maybe we should try this restaurant, the or this restaurant, or this restaurant. So just think we have, about we've that had great equation. partners, and on behalf of Roanoke um, County, I want to thank both of you for including you us and allowing us like to be part of this program because it's just incredible you know, it's how many people we're reaching today. So thank you both, and, and we'll let it get back to the program. I'll see you in a little bit, okay? Thanks, Melinda. Joining me now is Wayne Flippin, Executive Director, and Tom Tanner, um, Business Counselor from the Small Business Development Center. Gentlemen, thanks for sharing a few minutes. We've got a Thank record you. turnout inside, and I know you need to get back in. But Wayne, let's start with you. What are the services with the center? Well, the Small Business Center is specifically aimed at helping uh, small businesses grow and uh, develop and get started and we're real excited because the restaurant business obviously is a big one in this area so if we can help them get started and uh, grow their business it's uh, it helps everybody exactly and i know there's several different types of services um tom would you say an emphasis is on the business plan as a counselor well certainly the business plan is, is part of that's the first step you're going to take mm -hmm. part of the you know doing and working analysis uh, writing a business plan to see if the idea makes sense because you need to go through the process to see if your your restaurant is going to work yeah because you want to find out before you do it then rather than after you do it exactly but we also do things like helping go through the permit and licensing phase you know with what you need for the health department what do you need for ABC board and things like that uh -huh. yeah well I have to tell both of you you've been a great resource for us at the county to be able to refer people to because you do such intensive work with all of these businesses how many businesses do you think are here that you've been working with Wayne I don't know but one of the things that's very exciting is a lot of these people here are looking to start up new businesses exactly. and that's one of the things we really like to do in the valley is to help uh, our economic impact 
And uh, we find that if we're able to work with people early enough, then we can get keep them from making some mistakes that might cause them some problems along the way. So it, it's that's a, that's a great point. It really is because not only is this a help workshop, it's also maybe a proactive workshop to help people decide whether or not this is not a good thing for them to do. That's right, and our and our services are at no charge to the client. So another uh, important point. So we offer a lot of benefits. Thank you, gentlemen. We appreciate your You're time. You're welcome. I'm delighted to be speaking with Wayne Waldrop. Wayne, welcome to Roanoke. It's great to be here. Thank you. Wayne, now you are, and I'm going to let you give your title with the Virginia Business Information Center. Yes, I'm the Director of Business Information Services. Exactly, and that's with the Virginia Department of Business Assistance. That's right. And it's very special to have you out of Richmond and in Roanoke. And the reason is, this is a pilot program, right? That yes, we're doing? it is. Roanoke is leading the way once again. Uh, this is a Entrepreneur Express program designed to help restaurants in the area and we hope to uh, help them get started as well as succeed um, in, in their business plans. Exactly. And, and we're all just amazed and thrilled with the turnout today. It's much more than we expected. Is the same for you? Absolutely. Uh, we, I think we had to cut off uh, registration at something like 110, and we were very surprised and, and pleasantly so with the number. And because of that, I think we'll be replicating this program statewide. So thank you, Rono. Thank you. We're happy to take credit for that, but um, we've got so many wonderful partners that were involved with this. So it's just a thrill all the way around. And Wayne, while I've got you on camera, we want to say thank you for everything that your shop and, of course, Sandy Ratliff on your staff does for us in this area as far as helping businesses. We are so grateful. Well, Roanoke is an important market for us, and as you know, it is a collaborative effort. It's right. working together. So we appreciate your support and, and the support of other local allies, and together I think we can uh, create more jobs in the Commonwealth. And more programs. We hope so. And we hope you'll come back again, okay? I will. Thanks for your time, Wayne. Mm -hmm. Joining me now are members of the Virginia Tourism Corporation, Kitty Barker and Randy Rose. Thank you both for taking time out to talk for a second. You're welcome. Kitty, I know that both of you have the same position with the state, so would you kind of describe what that is and tell us some of the services that you do? Okay. We're both uh, development for specialists for tourism, mm -hmm. and we work in the, from Roanoke to the New River Valley as Randy's area and I work from Withville all the way to Lee County in helping businesses uh, start their tourism businesses and also helping uh, communities start their strategic planning and working on their tourism programs. Wow, that's really important and yes. that kind of segues into what I was going to ask you Randy. How did you get involved with the Entrepreneur Express program today? Well, there are a number of services that state, local, regional agencies provide, and the Entrepreneur Workshop allows all of those agencies and service providers to come together and reach the market that we want, and that's small businesses and entrepreneurs. So that's allowed us to reach that market all in a day's workshop, and uh, we can talk to them about marketing, and as Kitty said, we can help them with their, their tourism development efforts, business planning, marketing, things of that nature. So this is just a great opportunity for us. Thank you. Thank you both for being here because this workshop is all about bringing every resource to the table that right. we possibly yes. can. So thank you for making the effort to be here, and uh, we'll see you a little later in the workshop, okay? Right. Thank you. I'm with Mark Fry. I just ran into him at the workshop. Mark owns a business in Vinton, Virginia. It's called Creative Occasions Flowers and Gifts. And Mark, it's great to see you again. Thank you, Melinda. It's nice to see you too. And I'm really intrigued about what we were just talking about because you own a business, but you're here at the Entrepreneur Express. Tell us why. Right. Well, interestingly, before I started my business, I met with a gentleman from SCORE mm -hmm. and the Small Business Administration and really gained a lot of good information about yeah. how to go about the planning process, developing a business plan, all those kind of things. Exactly. Uh, with the restaurant business, I have a daughter who's in hospitality and tourism management at Virginia Tech. All right. And she thinks that someday she may like to own a restaurant. So when I saw this opportunity, yeah. I thought maybe a great time for me to partner with her and, and get her here to get some more information for her. That's wonderful. Thank well, you. I have a question to ask you. Sure. We are so thrilled about the turnout today. Were you all surprised that there are this many people in this region that are interested in possibly thinking about opening a restaurant? I, I got to tell you, when we got out of the car this morning, that was my first reaction. I looked at her and I said, I cannot believe there are so many people here. Um, so I, I think that's great, though. I do, too. And, and we really hope that everyone 
takes advantage of the workshop the way that you are, you know, to search things out, get information, and decide, is this what I want to do? Or if you already know that decision, then how do I go about it? Right, right. Trust me, as a business owner, I've made some decisions that were not good. Um, I, I just see no point in not being as well educated as you possibly can be before you even start. So I think things like this are great. Thank you. We're going to make you our poster child. For the show, okay? <laughs> awesome. All right, good. Mark, it's great to see you again. Thank you. Nice Thank to you see you too. Thank you for being on the program. Absolutely, no problem. Bye. Thanks. We are now with another Vinton business who happens to be attending the workshop. And gentlemen, I want to really thank you for taking the time out. I know I'm pulling you out of the workshop. We won't keep you long. But I've got a couple of questions because I was fascinated talking to you before about where your business is. Joe, you said your concept is almost ready to launch. Yes, it is. Uh, we're located at 2445 East Washington Avenue in Vinton, mm -hmm. um, just uh, west of William Byrd High School. Okay, and what is the name of your business? Uh, the, the business name is Smokin' Odie's <laughs> Grill and Smokehouse. I love that. It caught my attention right away. And when do you hope to open? Uh, hopefully we'll be uh, ready to go uh, within a month. Okay. Uh, should be the first part of April. Oh, that'll be wonderful. Yep. Maybe you should try for April Fool's Day. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, why are you here at the workshop today? Well, um, we're well into the, 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 the development stage, mm -hmm. uh, the build-out stage of our business and in, into uh, licensing and permits. And uh, we've spent plenty of time with what will be our principal uh, food supplier, U.S. Food and Service, uh, mm -hmm. going over menu ideas. Uh, going over um, ingredients and components. Uh, so a lot of the research has been done, but this is a, a, a great opportunity to learn more. We can always learn more. I'm always looking to learn more. And it's, uh, it's been good for me because it's confirmed uh, a lot of the ground that I've been over. So you're getting validation from this workshop? Yes, yes indeed. Well, that's good. No one has said that to us yet, so right. that's, that's really neat. Scott, you mentioned yes, something previously that you found beneficial from attending this workshop. What was that? Yes, ma'am. Well, it's a way to network with people that have been in the business for quite some time, and they have a lot of um, solutions to potential problems or questions that you have. Mm -hmm. And it's just a, it's awesome. That's a wonderful point, and thank you for making that. Thank you. So how did the two of you get together and decide to go into business? We've uh, worked together in, uh, in specialty uh, grocery situations and um, <clears throat> uh, worked well together and uh, often dreamed and talked about the possibility of working together in a restaurant of our own. So Wonderful. Well, I'm so happy for you that this is coming to fruition and really appreciate you being so cautious about what you're doing in this economy and getting out and doing your homework, so to speak, oh, yeah. and coming to programs like this. And I hope you'll find everything beneficial and we'll let you get back in there. But before I do, What's behind the name of the restaurant? Oh, I can't tell you that. That's a secret? That's a secret. And hopefully we'll build some intrigue over a year <laughs> or so, and we'll gra gradually let you all know. Well, we'll stay tuned for that one. Okay, you good. stay tuned, too. <laughs> show today, we'd like to focus on the activities of the Roanoke Valley Asian American Business Owners Association. And I'm pleased to have with me today three uh, guests who are vital members of that organization. And maybe I'd like to start today by one by one just introducing yourselves to the viewing audience and telling us what you do with the group. Sure. Uh, my name is Dharmendra Patel and I am uh, the president of the organization this year. Okay. And I have other members from the board. Good. My name is Kamlesh Javeri, and I'm with this board since last three years, and I'm currently as a director of the board. My name is Nilesh Patel, and I'm one of the board members since last two years. Right. Good. And uh, I know you gentlemen, and you all have businesses in the valley during yeah. different localities here in the valley. Um, Darmendra, maybe just talk a little bit about when the organization was founded and why. Well, we started the organization in 2007, like few business owners in the area got together, and we decided to have this organization. Our objective 
for this organization is to promote and protect interest of our members through like advocacy, professional development, uh, community services, and mm -hmm. uh, also like uh, say provide a collective platform to uh, interact with our vendors as well. So get like better pricing and things like that. So that was the main objective of our organization. Good, and how many members do you all have? Um, we have uh, almost approximately 180 members. 180, and I know I've been to one of your meetings. I was surprised at the number when you all invited me right. to come there, yes. and I guess it's growing yeah, it's as growing. well. Now, uh, in addition to that 180 members, we do have a lot of allied members who are like vendors supplied to our <coughs> members, you know? Yep. Yes, and I, I met some of those when right. I was there too. So right. um, I've been to a meeting, but maybe tell, again, tell the audience what goes on at a typical meeting. Uh, right, uh, we have uh, four meetings in a year, and uh, at each quarter we meet together with different bundles, the different uh, local government uh, organizations, the government officials, the law enforcement, uh, law enforcement officers, and uh, we provide a platform to <coughs> the members to interact with them and uh, create some kind of the networking opportunity, and we provide them the educational seminars. Good, and, and again, I, the meeting I've attended was with Kevin Bogus, who's the city manager of Salem, and it was interesting, we had a good meal at the, at the end of the meeting, and I mean, most meetings here in this country you eat first, but we ate at the end, which was kind of, which was, which was kind of nice. Um, what kind of businesses are at the meetings? Uh, uh, we have uh, different kind of businesses at the meeting. We have almost uh, 45 to 50 hotel owners. Uh, owners. Also, we have 150 convenience store owners, plus we have some doctors, pharmacists, and uh, some fast food restaurants. Yeah, it was a wide segment of, of, right. sure. of people when I was, when the right. meeting I attended. And primarily, like, our members are from, like, Roanoke Valley, New River Valley, and Shenandoah yes. Valley, so, like, it's part All of over the valley. Yes. And, right. and again, this is a, as, as the viewers know, this is a Roanoke County business partner right. show, but right. your business interest and the interest of your group is all over the valley, but yeah. we did want to right. focus you on Roanoke County. Exactly. I certainly appreciate the, the businesses you have in the county. Right. What, um, you know, what caused you to uh, come to the Roanoke Valley of all places? Because you, you know, you're not from here, so what brought you here? Why do you think people from other countries decide to come here and start businesses? Well, for, from my experience, I like, uh, main reason is like this is a like reasonable sized community you know like it provide, provides good uh, family life in addition to the business opportunities and also like it is easier to interact with the government and uh, get things done uh, so that like uh, uh, our businesses are operation, operating without any um, issues you know like and it, it is small enough environment to raise kids and things like that so that was the main reason for me and uh, for me, it was specifically the education system for my uh, the, the school system. School system that was wonderful over here, and uh, I think that was one of the major factors right. in deciding to come down to this uh, place. Mm -hmm. How about and, you, Neil? Uh, yes, I've been here for almost ten years, and uh, for me, is the main thing is that working with the local government has been great, mm -hmm. and I have done a lot of work with the local government and their support. It's a main factor for me. To do more development here. You know? yeah. Well, that, that's good to hear. I, I know uh, Neil uh, has a convenience store and worked with Roanoke County and the, and the Water Authority, the Western yep. Virginia Water Authority, to extend water to a project. And, sure. and, and so these are the kinds of things I think the group can really promote more of, yep. you know, Definitely. as we all work together. Yes, sure. It's been great. Well, good. Well, again, I know the organization's growing. Where do you see it going in the future? Well, actually, like uh, as as I told earlier, like with the organization started in 2007, so like 2007 and 2008 were primarily for us to like structure the organization and provide a strong foundation so that we can develop and evolve over the time uh, and provide better, more and more benefits to our members and like be more proactive within the community, right? So 2007-8, we basically focused on structuring the organization. Then year after, like we were like. Uh, we got involved with the local uh, uh, governments and things like that and started like getting some impact with them. Then last year, fo our focus was to providing better go like vendor services. We did even a like trade show with our vendors, so that was a great uh, interaction with vendors. So over three, four years, like we have, pro we have developed a great foundation and structure that can help our members and other agencies and governments over the uh, uh, next few years. So this year, in order to uh, make sure that the 
objectives that we have are sustainable, what we did was like we created three committees. First one was the PAC committee. The objective of the PAC committee a is political action poli committee. Political action committee. And basically like our goal is to uh, interact with the government agencies and people uh, and uh, uh, right. basically like work better relation have better rela working relationship right. with government so that like it benefits uh, mutually to everybody you know right. uh, I mean as a uh, fact I mean like last uh, month we had an opportunity like uh, after delegate Ge Greg Habib got elected he invited us in Richmond to meet with uh, Secretary of Commerce Mr. Cheng so we went over there met, uh, met with Mr. Cheng and we did talk about the regional development economic development of this region and what are the things that we need to do so we, there was some good discussion with uh, Secretary Cheng you know so those are the kind of things that we are looking at that would benefit the area as well so that good. was one of the committees other two committees are like uh, uh, strategic planning and actually Kamlesh and uh, Raja Zariwala, he's another gentleman on our board, they are the co chair so, so he can talk. So specifically in the strategic planning committee, we are trying to figure it out that in the next 10 years, where we want to take our organization, at which level we want to take. And mm -hmm. we have some short term goals, we have some uh, long term goals also. Right. So keeping all this thing in mind, we are trying to provide <coughs> our members the better leadership qualities, better leadership opportunities. I see. And the last one? It's a membership committee and I'm one of the co-chair of membership committee. And this year my, our main goal is to increase the members' benefit. I see. I see. And we spoke about that right. between the members and the vendors. Right. Well, you certainly right. are you're growing and you're doing a lot of great things. Right. Um, I would like to thank you all for being here and uh, stay tuned and we'll be right back. Preparing today reduces the consequences of a disaster tomorrow. Welcome back. We're here at Plastics One and with me today is Palmer Bland, Senior Vice President over Engineering, and Ted Limeberry, Senior Vice President over Manufacturing. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. Uh, Plastics One is a manufacturer of high-tech medical components and you've been here in, the, in Roanoke County since 1949 for over 60 years. That's a long time. Mm -hmm. And your operation here in Roanoke has played a critical role in advancing Virginia's presence in the medical device industry. Can you tell us a little bit about your products, Ted, and what you make here? <coughs> sure. Jill, we appreciate you being here today. And um, as you said, we uh, started in 1949. <coughs> and our primary uh, product back in 1949 was uh, hearing aid cords. And uh, we also supplied uh, ear mold uh, material for, to make the uh, impressions. And that lasted until the 80s, and uh, it started fading away. So about 1980, we started looking at medical device uh, uh, cable and connectors, <clears throat> and that's where we are today. And we make a, a variety of uh, medical uh, connectors. We also build cables uh, for the medical industry. We make them for NASCAR and uh, the crew drivers, I mean the crews. Uh, we build uh, cables for cochlear uh, implant systems. Uh, we build uh, cables for high-end uh, stereo users, and uh, we build cables for entertainers. Mm -hmm. Now, you have three different divisions. Can you tell us a little bit about those divisions? Mm -hmm. Sure can. The first one was CCS that I just described mm -hmm. it. The second is custom injection molding. And we either build or use a customer's existing mold to build, uh, I mean, to mold injection molded parts. And uh, our... Um, customer base is about 150 miles uh, around here, although we do have one customer in uh, Ireland. Mm -hmm. And the other division is preclinical, <clears throat> and we uh, manufacture electrodes uh, for uh, medical uh, research, and uh, uh, the, we have customers all over the world. Mm -hmm. Now, Palmer, I know you have a number of services that you offer to your customers, uh, engineering design and clean room services, mm -hmm. for example. Can you tell us some more about some of those services? Sure, sure. Yeah, we have about uh, a team of about 15 engineers with support people. And we can take the design or the concept, if you have an idea, we can take it from that uh, design right on in through the manufacturability of the part. And we'll build the, uh, the tool here and we'll build the uh, actual parts here and we'll do the testing and make sure we verify that it meets the customer's requirements and uh, we can do all those services and we have uh, labs uh, we have uh, the clean room service as you were talking about you mentioned uh, we uh, 
we have that and that will allow us to uh, package a part ready for sterilization. Well, those are all exciting services that I'm sure your customers appreciate now. I know you and Ted have both been here for 27 years. I think you said right. you got here, what, the same day or a day apart? A day apart. A day <laughs> apart. And well, you have a lot of stories to tell, I'm sure, about the growth of this company over this time frame. Right. Uh, in fact, you've had several expansions over the last 10 years, and the latest one was just this year with the little 5,000 square foot mm -hmm. warehouse expansion that you added on. Can you tell our viewers mm -hmm. about that? Sure. We. Uh, we're always looking to expand and to add to our manufacturing capability. Uh, the infrastructure is quite important. So we typically, in times of uh, good times or bad times too, we'll, we'll build when the time is right. Not necessarily having something to put in it, but to plan for the future. And we do that a lot. So this particular facility here allows us to store uh, products and to uh, use for overflow but uh, eventually uh, we'll use it for production. We have been so impressed with Plastics One's growth over the last several years. Um, further demonstration has been your growth in, in employment. I know there's been a 30 percent increase since even 1998 where you were up to 310 employees now and mm -hmm. for that we are very grateful to both of you. Mm -hmm. Um, now, Ted, I understand that a representative will be going from Plastics One with the Virginia Economic Development Partnership on an international trade mission to Australia. Can you tell us about that and, you know, what uh, percentage of your business is in international trade? Sure. First of all, we uh, currently have about 10 or 12 percent of our business is uh, international, <clears throat> and we look to see that increase. Uh, we do have uh, existing customers in Australia at present, and uh, we just felt this would be a good opportunity to hook up with the uh, state of Virginia and mm. uh, see what they can do for us. So we're pretty excited about the opportunity to do that. And you're also ISO certified? Yes, we are. Uh, and we're currently working on uh, another certification, which is 1345, which is a medical uh, certification, which is one we really want. Mm, that's wonderful. And you guys have also been very involved in the community. Can you give us some examples of things you've done here in, in the county, in the valley? Yeah, well, uh, I'm very active in the church. Uh, also, with Rescue Mission, we, uh, we support them, uh, mm -hmm. Feed America. Uh, a lot of different, in Sa Salem Rowan County Chamber of Commerce, I was on the uh, board there for three years. And we had another employee here who was on the board there, but uh, try to do as much as we can. Of course, you know, uh, uh, I think uh, helping the community is, is one of the things that we do best. Any exciting plans for the future that you can share with our viewers? <laughs> is Plastics One yeah, headed in plan. any future uh, <laughs> expansion directions? Well, we're, uh, it's funny you ask because uh, we are looking at another expansion as, as we speak. Uh, and uh, we're, uh, we're talking, we just finished this one, of course, you know, we're always planning for the future. We need more manufacturing space for uh, the CCS area, as we call it, the connector area. So uh, we're looking at that. Now, you know, we're, we're not sure of the time frame, but uh, we're starting the uh, uh, design of the building now. So. When we have when we're ready to move into it, we'll, we'll have it. So uh, That's exciting news. Yeah. You have been such a great contributor to the Roanoke economy for so many years, and we thank you so much for all that you've done for us here in the Roanoke County and the Roanoke Valley. Well, thank you. And thanks, well, thanks for being with us today. Thank thanks you. to Roanoke County. Thank you. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Thank you for tuning in. I hope today's show was informative and we look forward to bringing you the next edition of Roanoke County Business Partners.